The movie kicks off with a guy named Jason Bourne, who decides to isolate himself from the world after he exposed the crimes of the CIA's Blackbriar operation 12 years ago. He used to work for the CIA in a secret operation called Treadstone, but he lost his memory for a while and now he's back, trying to make ends meet by street fighting. But he's got this heavy guilt weighing him down because of all the people he had to take out. Over in Reykjavik, Iceland, we've got Mickey Parsons, who used to be part of the same CIA operation, Treadstone. She's doing some hacking business, trying to grab some important files from the CIA servers. But when she cracks open the Treadstone file, she stumbles upon info about a guy named Richard Webb, who turns out to be Jason's dad and a CIA member. Trouble starts brewing because the CIA's cyber whiz, Heather Lee, catches wind of Nikki's hack job and swiftly puts a tracking virus in all those files Nikki grabbed. Heather even goes a step further and messes with Nikki's electricity, plunging her place into darkness. Lucky for Nikki, she gets those crucial CIA files onto a flash drive and hightails it out of there. At the CIA office, Heather was in a meeting with CIA Director Robert Dewey and Edwin Russell, who's the head of American National Intelligence. They were all talking about Nikki, who had pulled off that hacking stunt and helped Jason escape from the CIA. Robert and Edwin decided they needed to track down Nikki, and Heather pitched in, asking to lead the operation because she had experience dealing with Nikki's hacking tricks. Meanwhile, Jason was still doing his thing in the underground fight scene, but he spotted Nikki in the crowd, so he wrapped up his fight quickly to meet up with her. While grabbing his stuff in the dressing room, he found a message from Nikki, telling him to head over to the town square where a bunch of people were protesting. They wanted to give the slip to any CIA agents who might be on their tail. When Jason made it to the protest spot, he's scanning the crowd for Nikki. On the flip side, Heather's team had tracked down Nikki, and she wasn't the only one onto her. Robert had also sent one of his deadly agents, known as the Asset, to the scene. After a little while, Jason managed to get close to Nikki amidst all the protesters. She told him about hacking the CIA's system and digging up info about Jason's dad being part of the Treadstone Operations founding crew. But the CIA agents were catching on to Jason, so he quickly told Nikki to split up so they could dodge the CIA members who were chasing them. So, Jason had to shake off those agents tailing him, and he came up with a wild plan. He set the street on fire, hopped on a train, and when the agents followed, he took them down. But then, the asset showed up and things got intense. Jason had to grab a police motorbike nearby, pick up Nikki, and make a run for it. The asset wasn't backing down, though. With Heather's guidance, he tracked them down. But the protest had turned into chaos with Molotov cocktails flying, making it tough for the asset to keep up. Eventually, he crashed into a building, and Heather told him to go up a building and take a shot at Jason. He did, and his shot made Jason and Nikki tumble off the motorbike. Jason tried to help Nikki, but the asset shot her, and she passed away. Before she died, Nikki tossed a key to Jason. Jason was really thankful for Nikki's sacrifice, so he took the key she gave him. The next day, he went to a public locker Nikki had mentioned and found a flash drive and a notebook about her investigation. When he checked the notebook, he found a special code Nikki had written, which turned out to be an address in Berlin, Germany. Meanwhile, Robert was at a restaurant meeting with Aaron Kalor, the guy who ran the Deep Dream Company, making software for computers and phones worldwide. Robert explained a CIA plan called Iron Hand and wanted Aaron to help by sharing info about his software users so the CIA could spy on them. Aaron turned him down, saying the CIA's security wasn't good enough, and he didn't want to risk his company getting in trouble if they were found out. After that, Aaron left the meeting. Unfortunately, because Aaron refused to cooperate, the next day, some legal officials came to question him about information violations at his company. Aaron was irritated and knew it was Robert's doing because they couldn't work together. Aaron decided to reveal all the CIA's wrongdoing, including the Iron Hand program, in a speech he'd give in Las Vegas soon. On another front, Jason had reached the address hidden in Nikki's secret code. There, he met a guy named Christian DeSalt, who led a hacker group Nikki had worked with before. Jason wasted no time and asked Christian to open the files on Nikki's flash drive. However, Heather's virus in the files let the CIA track whoever opened it. When Heather got a virus alert, she immediately sent a CIA team to arrest Jason in Berlin. 
Christian reminded Jason that they should share all the files on Nikki's flash drive with the American public to expose the CIA's wrongdoings. But Jason had personal reasons to keep some things private, so he refused Christian's request and went back to checking the files, which contained information about his father. This made Jason recall the time his father died in a bomb explosion before Jason joined Treadstone. Christian tried to attack Jason to grab the flash drive, but Jason fought him off and knocked him out. Shortly after, Jason went back to check more files, but Heather managed to hack into his laptop, causing it to shut down completely. At that moment, Heather informed Robert that she had wiped out all the files Jason had accessed. Robert also contacted Jason, pretending to buy some time for the approaching CIA team. Meanwhile, Heather discreetly warned Jason that a CIA team would arrive in just two minutes. Upon hearing this, Jason swiftly left the location, ensuring the team sent to capture him couldn't find him. Sometime later, Robert, Edwin, and Heather gathered for another meeting about the ongoing operation led by Heather. During the meeting, she requested that the CIA team not kill Jason because she intended to persuade him to rejoin the organization. Edwin appeared interested in the plan, while Robert, despite his disagreements, couldn't challenge Edwin's higher rank. The next day, Jason continued his quest to uncover the connection between himself and his father's involvement in the Treadstone operation. He reached out to a man named Malcolm Smith, a former Treadstone member who had looked after him when Richard was killed. Jason arranged to meet Malcolm and then ended the call. He headed to a rooftop to keep an eye on the meeting location. From a distance, he spotted a minibus that seemed suspicious, possibly a CIA surveillance vehicle. Meanwhile, Heather, the asset, and their team were also watching Malcolm closely to ensure he didn't reveal Jason's past, using threats against Malcolm's family as leverage. After making their preparations, the asset and Heather's team exited their vehicle to start their surveillance. However, the asset secretly disposed of the tracking device Heather had given him and eliminated all his team members. Unbeknownst to Heather, this was all done on Robert's orders, as he hoped to create tension between Heather and Jason, in the hope that Heather would change her mind about eliminating Jason. On the other hand, Heather, inside the surveillance vehicle, grew suspicious when she couldn't contact her missing team members. As for the asset, he made his way to the rooftop of a building and readied his sniper rifle. Meanwhile, Jason, on his way to meet Malcolm, went to the electrical panel of a building and tampered with some cables connected to a cell phone. After he moved away from the panel, he accidentally dialed the cell phone he had connected to the cables, which triggered the fire alarm in the office area. This caused everyone to panic and evacuate the building, thinking there was a fire. Jason seized this opportunity to approach Malcolm without being noticed by the asset. The crowded scene made it difficult for the asset to target Jason and Malcolm. Jason's plan worked, and he managed to get Malcolm up to the rooftop to learn the truth about his father's death and connection to the Treadstone operation. However, Malcolm couldn't speak freely because he was in contact with Robert through a hidden headset. This ensured his family's safety, but it frustrated Jason, who ended up physically assaulting Malcolm. Little did Jason know, the asset had already located them. After a severe beating, Malcolm finally revealed the truth. He disclosed that Richard wasn't killed by terrorists, but was intentionally made to disappear by the CIA, because Richard rejected the idea of Jason joining the Treadstone operation. Jason, seeking revenge after receiving false information about his father's death, had joined Treadstone. Jason desperately asked for the identity of his father's murderer, but before Malcolm could respond, the asset arrived. Jason's memories resurfaced, and he realized that the killer in front of him was the same agent present at the car explosion that killed his father. While Jason was lost in thought, the asset fired a shot, causing both Malcolm and Jason to fall from the rooftop. Fortunately, Jason managed to grab onto a cable, sustaining only minor injuries, but Malcolm didn't survive the fall. The asset descended from the building to confirm their deaths, but to his surprise, Jason had regained consciousness and slipped away from the scene. Heather was quite frustrated after losing her team and losing track of Jason. Suddenly, she was startled when Jason shattered the car window and demanded that she start the car. As they drove, Heather, seeking revenge against the asset and Robert, decided to share some information with Jason. She revealed that her boss was on his way to Las Vegas for a speech with Aaron. Heather even handed over her cell phone so Jason could stay updated on the CIA's plans. 
Meanwhile, Robert had already arrived in Las Vegas, determined to eliminate Aaron. This decision came after one of Aaron's colleagues provided information that the head of the Deep Dream Company was about to expose the CIA's Iron Hand secrets to the public. Robert intended to carry out the operation in a public setting to prevent Aaron's plan from coming to light. Meanwhile, Heather got wind of Jason heading to Las Vegas and worried that he might get intercepted at the airport due to a CIA ban on his travel. To assist him, she decided to erase Jason's identity from the CIA database, making it easier for him to pass through immigration. As time passed, just before Aaron's speech was set to begin, everyone went about their tasks. This included the asset, who readied himself with a suitcase to eliminate Aaron. In the midst of it all, Jason disguised himself as event staff and discreetly took a tracking device and a mini camera that were on display. Swiftly, he placed the tracking device into Heather's pocket and asked her to slip it into Robert's pocket. Shortly thereafter, Heather, sensing that something unusual was unfolding during the speech, promptly informed Jason. He rushed into the room where Aaron was delivering his speech, scanning the area and sensing someone lurking behind the air vent. Just as Aaron was on the verge of exposing CIA wrongdoing, Jason swiftly directed the stage lights toward the ventilation, causing the asset's shot to merely wound Aaron, though the asset had intended to fatally shoot the head of the software company. Panic ensued among the attendees, and the asset, about to flee, shot the security personnel on patrol. Meanwhile, Robert decided to make a hasty exit from the speech venue after discovering Jason's whereabouts. Jason attempted to chase him, utilizing the tracking device that Heather had sneakily placed in his boss's jacket pocket. With ease, Jason pinpointed Robert, who was heading upstairs. After incapacitating one of Robert's bodyguards, Jason promptly entered the elevator and disabled access to it, preventing the other bodyguards from reaching the top floor. Upon reaching the CIA director's office, Jason inquired about his past and Richard's death. As the discussion unfolded, one of Robert's bodyguards arrived at the room, having ascended the emergency stairs. In a swift move, Jason shot the bodyguard, and simultaneously, Heather made her entrance, ending Robert's life. Without uttering a word, Jason swiftly departed, determined to pursue the asset for avenging his father's death. Transitioning to the asset's attempt to escape, he was seen stealing a SWAT vehicle parked in front of the building. Jason immediately gave chase, and in addition to Jason tailing him, the asset found himself pursued by several police cars, because he had commandeered the SWAT team's vehicle. He even intentionally collided with a car on the road, causing a traffic accident. After managing to shake off Jason's car, the asset decided to enter a tunnel, with Jason following closely behind. The two engaged in a fierce battle, and at one point, the asset nearly had the upper hand before Jason managed to turn the tables, defeating the man responsible for Richard's death. He then hastily made his exit before the police arrived on the scene. A few days later, Aaron, who survived the shooting, left the hospital but stayed quiet despite many reporters asking about the truth he planned to reveal in his last speech. Meanwhile, Heather met with Edwin to discuss her becoming the new head of the CIA after successfully completing her mission. Surprisingly, Heather's true aim in offering to lead the operation to catch Jason was to gain Edwin's trust. She even pledged to bring Jason back into the CIA once she officially took Robert's position. If she failed, she intended to eliminate the former Treadstone operative. Edwin, intrigued by her proposal, agreed to let Heather lead the American intelligence organization. In the film's conclusion, it showed a city park where Heather approached Jason and asked him to rejoin the CIA. He walked away, saying he'd think about it. When Heather returned to her car, she discovered a camera containing a video of her conversation with Edwin, discussing her plans for Jason. Unbeknownst to her, Jason had previously placed a recording device in Edwin's car and had been following her. The moral lesson of the story is that secrecy and deception within organizations can lead to betrayal and danger. Trust and openness are crucial for maintaining relationships and achieving common goals.